an instinctive level, all I think is kill, 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 kill. So here's a video about this piece of shit. He calls himself Litgenstein, which is just a repulsive name. He's an annoying freak who lives on Twitter. He has tweeted thousands of times, but he doesn't have anything intelligent to say. It's just all posturing. He's one of those people who post shitty esoteric jokes, and they are the worst possible jokes. You cannot laugh at this stuff. It's just a more subtle way for him to constantly say, Look at how smart I am. Look, I know about this concept. I'm such a nerd. It's completely pretentious. All of it's just meant to show off. His smugness is palpable. As you can see, he strives to be the most arrogant, unlikable piece of shit on earth. So most of the time he's just bragging or name dropping, but every now and then he gives his opinion and exposes himself as a reprehensible fool. A while back there was a lot of talk about this demonically bad white empiricism paper. So the first moronic thing that jumps out at you when looking at this paper is that it claims that relativity shows black people are equally competent and objective as everyone else. That's dumb. Relativity isn't about the competence or objectivity of anyone. A frame of reference isn't a person. Black people could all be vegetables or suffer from extreme delusions and biases, and in no way would that violate relativity. Also, the idea that everyone's equally competent is just obviously false. Then there's this part. Scientists are also typically modest, believers in the idea that there is only one science, who, rather than feeling burdened to prove there is only one science, expect contingentists to prove that there can be more than one. What? What does that mean? This is unclear at best. When I read more than one science, the first two interpretations that came to mind are that she's either allowing for contradictions or she's relying on some meaningless relativistic idea of truth. Now, I'm sure her views are as dumb as possible, but I'm going to be needlessly careful here and provide a less ridiculous explanation of contingentism. There are different definitions of contingentism, but a rough definition is that there could be multiple successful sciences. Now, successful doesn't necessarily mean true. It means that it works in some sense. Precisely what they mean by that is kind of up in the air, and I'm not going to get into it. My point is that technically contingentism doesn't entail a rejection of objective truth or metaphysical realism, although its adherents often reject those sorts of positions. In the description I'll leave a link to a blog post with a more detailed explanation of contingentism. Anyway, this paper is pure shit. As with many woke studies papers, it's not actually better than the hoax articles meant to make fun of postmodernism. So of course Lichtenstein's first impulse is to defend this sick joke of a paper. He says, well, she's an actual scientist, and her critics are uneducated in science. That just makes it more embarrassing, you fuckwit. This guy is one of those sickening obscurantists who shows up whenever there's outrage over some woke studies filth that promotes relativism or some postmodern identitarian trash, and he says, There's nothing to see here. This is just ordinary, reasonable stuff. No, stuff like this is written by people who are actually insane, and he'll do whatever he can to distract people and disrupt the outrage with his pedantry and faux expertise. And good God, the pedantry from this guy is just astounding. So some moron said, Objectivity itself is the reification of white male thought, which is a typical thing you hear from postmodern leftists. It's also completely insane and indefensible. Well, some random layman replies that it's objectively true that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Then, Lichtenstein shows up to dazzle this guy by hassling him about Platonism versus nominalism. Now, why is he doing that? Well, it's because he can't actually defend the position that's being attacked. All he can do is try to nitpick and confuse the critics. Believe me, I wish this wasn't real, but what am I supposed to do? Alright, so this guy used to like Sam Harris back when new atheism was in style. But now there's this new fad of hipster fucks who ridicule objectivity and science and defend postmodernism. So now he's saying that Sam Harris's argument against free will is dumb. I don't know what he's talking about because Sam Harris made multiple arguments against free will, some of which are very old and actually good, like the standard argument. Of course, this guy doesn't give an actual objection to what Sam Harris said because his opposition to him is just a fashion statement. Friggin' can't handle it, man! I, almost, I went off this planet! Could I ask you a question? I went off this planet now! Now let's look at this horrible tweet about logic. 
this guy speaks with so much fake authority. He acts as though his positions are undisputed facts. He says that disagreeing with him shows that you haven't read anything about the topic, but obviously he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. How can anyone be shocked by someone saying that logic is objective? That's just a totally normal view. And so is logical monism, the view that there is only one correct system of logic. It's defended by excellent philosophers in the literature he pretends to care so much about. Anyway, he thinks the choice between logics is normative, and he thinks that means it's not objective. That's a horribly mistaken view, and I'd like to see his argument for it, but I suspect he doesn't even have one, because, again, he acts like these things aren't even contested when they absolutely are. And of course, he can't make a compelling argument for such a view, because arguments presuppose logic, and he denies that logic is objective. Logic is fundamental, so this is an extreme form of relativism. As I just mentioned, it would mean that you can get away with rejecting the logic behind any argument. It wouldn't be objectively true whether or not any argument is valid or invalid. If logic is not objective, then I'm free to use idiotic rules of inference that allow me to deduce all sorts of absurd conclusions. So Lichtenstein cannot say there's anything objectively wrong with the obviously fallacious argument shown on screen. And of course, Lichtenstein's dumbass view would allow me to deny self-evident truths like the law of identity, or affirm ridiculous rules like A is not A. Now, I know Lichtenstein would respond to this by snickering like a freak, and he'd say something like, Heh heh, I already reject the law of identity. Don't you know that no one takes classical logic seriously? That's completely idiotic, and it also doesn't address the issue. The problem is that he can't rationally criticize the law of identity or whatever absurd laws I make up because he doesn't think logic is objective. Another problem is that logic is also presupposed in any statement. The meaning of a statement depends on logic. Without logic, you wouldn't know whether a statement entails itself or rules anything out. So what's going on here? Well, the layman he talked to hasn't looked into this stuff. He's just speaking from common sense. So Lichtenstein acts like what he said is just incredibly ridiculous and unheard of. It's just a scare tactic to shut him down. He wants this guy to think that his view isn't taken seriously by any experts, even though it's boringly ordinary in actuality. The fact is, Lichtenstein is a liar. He's not well read. He learned philosophy on Twitter. Listen, you ignorant fool. Shut up! Just shut your mouth until you know a thimble of information. Also, he thinks I'm a crank for disagreeing with cuck philosophy, that esteemed scholar of Shrek and K-pop. And of course, he thinks that cuck philosophy owned me, as he says, because he's a child. But he can't explain how. And here it just needs to be pointed out that cuck philosophy and his fans can't argue with me. They've got nothing. So, one of the most common ways of defending postmodernism is to equivocate between the extreme and indefensible thing postmodernists have actually said and a softer misrepresentation of it. Usually this softer claim takes the form of a trivial truth. For example, the scientific process is influenced by power. So the trick is to flip back and forth between ridiculous positions like relativism and truisms. Lichtenstein changes this strategy up a bit by saying the position of postmodernists is that knowledge of the external world is inaccessible. This softer misrepresentation is still radical and controversial, but not as indefensible as relativism.